Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. We're continuing uh, the lesson that we started Sunday, which was part 332, titled Prototokos Advent, which was part two, and in it we were discussing the ultimate state <coughs> that uh, the Father has designed the sons to occupy. We stated that the Lord would come three times, and the third time that he comes, that he would <coughs> fulfill the Father's prerequisite for the sons, that is, the adoption would climax in the sons would enter into the completion of the divine calling. We determined that there were two, actually three positions in the Prototokos group. Position of elder, position of priest, angel, and the position of bride member. We embarked upon discussing the position of the elder. The elder is seen in uh, Revelation, the fourth chapter, <clears throat> as a representative group seated around the throne of God wearing crowns. We talked a little bit about the tasks that they would have in the heavens. Their main task would not begin until the return of the Lord to set up his kingdom. We want to proceed now with giving a description of their function, their duty, at the time of their return. Scripture indicates it is the elder group, which are kings, which will defeat the Luciferians, imprison them again at the second coming, and they would set up their kingdom. Turn to the book of Daniel. Then we're going to come back. Daniel the second chapter. <clears throat> when you get there we want verses 43 and 44. <clears throat> Verse 43, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. They shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So it's referring to the time in which the human race will forfeit its position as dom dominating the surface world and be replaced by superior races that are symbolized by the <coughs> element iron. <coughs> the uh, element clay is assigned to the human race to show the relative comparison to those that are going to displace <coughs> Adamic man. There will be there will be superior, far beyond the capacity of humans to operate, understand, or compete with. In this respect, they will dominate the earth. They will dictate life the way they want it to be understood. <clears throat> and the human race will have absolutely no comprehension objectively of anything until the coming of the Lord. Now verse 44. And in the days of these kings, so the iron symbolizes rulership of non-human kings. In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which never which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. 
So the main group that is going to be responsible for displacing <coughs> the kings that are going to dominate the earth will be the elder group of the sons of God. We see this illustrated Daniel 7 verse 18 But the saints of the Most High, this group of saints are the, the elder group that's pictured seated on the throne in Revelation, the fourth chapter. The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. <clears throat> so they have been authorized, they have been called to dominate the earth out of the hands of the Luciferians. Yes. I have the point that the elders are possessing the kingdom forever, even forever now. Because I'm sure that some people want to know this. What are the total uh, angels doing? Where are they? And what else is relevant to this particular place? We're going to get into that in this new lesson. Sit my hands again. <laughs> yes. Thank you. We want to take it step by step. All right. Turn to Revelation, the second chapter. And as you're turning, we had said during the lesson Sunday that the elders are seen seated around the Father's throne wearing crowns of gold which in the Greek are Stephanos, which connote a wreath, woven wreath, over the head of the individual, connoting that individual is a victor. He is an overcomer. He is authorized to rule and reign with Christ. Do you understand that the diadem version applies to the priests. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. There'll be more than one set of crowns right. being worn. I was wondering when I can ask my question. <laughs> I have to wait till I... <laughs> So, uh, each, each crown represents a certain accomplishment? Accomplishment, a characteristic. Remember, in, in, in eternity, life is lived in the element of light. <clears throat> And light manifests in a multitude of different ways. <clears throat> Let me do a lesson on that if we get a chance. <clears throat> but here, Revelation, second chapter. I want to pick it up. So I think verse 26 to verse 27. And he that overcometh, we just said that the elders wear crowns which connote that they are victorious overcomers. So this promise <coughs> falls on them. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power or authority over the nations. We said that the nations connote the races of the creation. <clears throat> and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father. So the elder group are going to dominate through uh, dunamis supernatural power the races that were formerly under Lucifer. Turn to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, 31st chapter. When you get there, we want verse 6. Okay. 
all the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs. Under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young, and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. He's talking about Lucifer at his zenith. He dominated all the races of the creation. They were under his influence. Now look at you're in uh, the same chapter, verse 16. Hill 31. Mm -hmm. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit and all the trees of Eden, the choice and the best of Lebanon, all the drink water shall be comforted in any of the parts of the earth. So at the time Lucifer revolted <clears throat> everybody that was in a position of rulership got cast down into the subterranean regions whether they were part of his rebellion or not. Those that were not part of his rebellion were uh, exiled to a paradise region where they would be comforted. Those that were part of his rebellion were sent down and imprisoned in other areas of the subterranean. <clears throat> the nations were left in the hands of a secondary group of administrators, which they currently are under. When the Luciferians are released, they're going to recapture the surface world. They're going to take dominion again over these nations. And they're going to go on into what we call the tribulation period. <clears throat> the elder group are being fashioned at this point, prepared to take back the kingdom, the dominion of the creation out of the death grip of these Luciferian rulers and reestablish it under the dominion of the Father. Mm. Yes. Yes. Isn't that reestablishment by the elders? Since we know that there will be a tiny fraction of people who are not predestinated, but they're temporal, who will be, for one of a better term, classified as protocols because they make the rapture, mm -hmm. should we understand that those very people that we're talking about will also be part of the ones who will be doing the recapture? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So, at that point then, they're considered prototokos. Yes. Everybody that makes the rapture is considered a prototokos. You get a prototokos that don't make the rapture, they're going to lose the prototokos right. status. So they'll be considered not prototokos. Yes. <coughs> okay. Now we're going we're gonna to conclude, turn to Psalms 149. Psalms 149, verses 5 to 9. <coughs> Psalms 149, mm -hmm. verses 5 to 9. Right. Let the saints be joyful in glory. It's talking about <clears throat> the picture of Revelation, the elder group around the throne of God in glory, in the fullness of their glory. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Clouds. Let them... <clears throat> let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. <coughs> the idea that we're teaching you here <coughs> is to find out what your place is in the scheme of things and live your life so that you can prepare yourself to step into the position that God's called you to. That's why I can't exclaim enough. This is not a Bible study. This is a... <clears throat> this is a class in which you are preparing to comprehend the depth of Scripture. 
and apply the depth of scripture to the uniqueness of your life so that you can overcome the challenges of life and understand where you're going, what your destiny is, and what's waiting for you. Everybody in the body of Christ who was anybody knew exactly what was waiting for them. Paul understood his destiny. Jesus understood his destiny. <clears throat> Even the apostles understood their destiny because the Holy Spirit gave them the comprehension that they needed to prepare their life for what God had called them to. In this excuse of Christianity, people are not being prepared because they're not shown, they're not encouraged, they're kept in a state of ignorance. Sir. Mr. Jones. Yes. In all you're saying, I've surmised <coughs> that God from eternity, before we became human, decided each one of our destinies. Yes. Well, it seems as if he wants us to rule his creation. Yes. How come that's not being taught in the mainstream churches? <laughs> because number one, <clears throat> they're not the mainstream churches of God. In the mainstream churches of men. Have you guys ever heard that? That you'll have a position in heaven when you get there. Not in that, in that, in, not in those no. matter of fact terms. Nobody's actually talked about, no. yeah, I'm, you know, we're going to be rulers in heaven. It's like, it sounds blasphemous. No one talks about it. Yeah, not really. Just, you know, heard about the great white throne judgment, things like that, and there's some awards, but it was not seen as any type of, like, wow. position of any type of authority or even any teaching in heaven. A lot of people are going to have to answer to right. God for misusing They're the practical. calling that they <clears throat> should have pursued. Now, we're going to go on into our mm -hmm. main lesson here. That was dealing with, that was dealing with one class of the Prototokos group. Remember we said there were three classes of Prototokos. The elders, the priest angels, and the bride. This is going to relate to the second group. 